What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Rage Nation show. This is just a web series where we talk about all things that matter to me in the world of upcoming films. In this episode, we're going to talk about G.I. Joe 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, and also the future of the Fast and Furious franchise. Let's start off by talking about G.I. Joe 3. And G.I. Joe 3 originally had a tentative release of 2016. Now, it looks like that might change, all right? Because producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura uh, mentioned that he wanted to take the G.I. Joe franchise in a whole new direction. He wants to revamp it, okay? Because the last two films really weren't that great. I mean, they were okay at best, but it just got worse when we got to Retaliation, all right? I'll be completely honest. I actually enjoyed G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. I thought it was fun, okay? I thought it was very entertaining. But G.I. Joe Retaliation... You know, the trailers made me feel that I had higher expectations, but I was let down. The best part about the movie was really the um, the ninja sequence on the mountain, but everything else just felt like John Chu was the wrong director for the job, okay? Uh, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra came out in 2009 with 35% of Rotten Tomatoes, 150 million domestically, and 302 worldwide. Um, G.I. Joe Retaliation came out in 2013, 28% Rotten Tomatoes, 122 uh, domestically, and 375 million worldwide. Now, I can understand why Lorenzo de Bonaventura would want to revamp their franchise, okay? They need to make a bigger hit. First of all, they need to make the movie better in terms of, uh, you know, being being a better film, you know, as a whole, and, and you know, story and character-wise. And also, they need to really uh, make it sell better, okay? There's no reason why it shouldn't make more money, okay? G.I. Joe is a huge property. So what they're doing is that, uh, well, originally they had Jonathan Lemkin, who, uh, who wrote Shooter and Lethal Weapon 4. Originally, he was writing the film, but it looks like uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura wants to uh, take the, the movie into a whole other direction, so instead, he's got uh, Aaron Berg to write it. Now, Aaron Berg, uh, he d he doesn't have a whole lot of writing credits. That's the thing. That's that's the thing about this, this choice. Maybe he doesn't want that. Maybe he wants someone to just um, uh, develop a new style of writing, okay? And by, by doing that, you get a brand new writer. Okay, um, but what's really interesting is that the film will now be centered on Roadblock. Okay, uh, the, 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 the second film, Retaliation, was centered on Roadblock. So they want to continue that, especially with the popularity of Dwayne Johnson. So they want to make him the main character. Okay, what didn't work for Retaliation is that they just killed off Duke. You know what I'm saying? That we originally thought Duke was going to be in it, but they killed him off right at the beginning, and then Roadblock took over. That's something we did not expect. Okay, but now Roadblock, you know, he's going to be the main character. And it's going to center around him, and then I don't know how they're going to do it, but they said they're going to revamp the franchise by taking it into a whole other direction. Oh no! Uh, well, now one thing that's uh, um, good is that they got DJ Caruso directing. I like DJ Caruso. I thought he's a. He, he, I think he's a very decent director. I like. Uh, I actually liked I Am Number Four. Um, you know, it had its fair share of problems, pacing problems, but I liked it. Okay, for the most part, I really enjoyed Eagle Eye, and I also liked Disturbia. Okay, uh, so I think he could be a really good choice for this film. Um, whether or not it's coming out in 2016, we don't know. But um, you know what? Uh, if it's if we're getting a new sequel, I'm down. I want to see more G.I. Go Joe films. If they think they're going to make it better by, by revamping it, then so be it. Okay? I just want to see all new characters. All right? Bring in more characters. That's what it's all about. The characters are always what made G.I. Joe the cartoons great because they're so colorful. And I just want to see what each one does. You know, their specialty. All right, so that's it about G.I. Joe 3. Now let's talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Looks like they've already started filming. They already started filming in New York, of course. And it wasn't a major scene. What it really was was um, a scene involving um, a basketball game. All right, because uh, it was just revealed recently that uh, last week or maybe two weeks ago, somewhere around that time, uh, Los Angeles Clippers player J.J. Redick uh, was filming a scene for the film, for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, with uh, his teammates Austin Rivers, Matt Barnes, and Spencer Haas, and DeAndre Jordan. Okay, um, Those scenes were shot 
over that past week and it involved uh, Will Arnett as well as new cast members uh, Alessandra Ambrosio. Okay, so they shot some scenes already and it involves a basketball scene. Now, whether it's a major action sequence, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Okay, I mean, there weren't any turtles there or maybe he wasn't allowed to talk about it, but that's all I know so far. Another thing that I do know is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 is now titled Half Shell. What that means doesn't mean a whole lot, really. It's just a catchphrase, okay? Uh, or rather, just a catchword. It's just half shell, okay? That can be changed, okay? Uh, that could be just their working title for the time being, all right? But uh, anyways, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, half shell, uh, with a couple of basketball players. Uh, and Will Arnett will, of course, be back. Uh, no word of Megan Fox, though, but I'm pretty sure she would be back, considering she is April O'Neil. Now, what's really awesome is a new addition to the team, and that is KC Jones. Everybody's fan favorite human character is is going to be part of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, and he will be played by Stephen Amell, who is, of course, known most famous for his work as the Arrow. Okay, so that's really, really exciting to know that Stephen Amell is going to be a part of this, and to top things off, he's playing KC Jones. Okay, I love the KC Jones character. So I'm happy to, 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 to see that he's going to be part of the team helping out the Turtles, Vigilante in New York with all the sports equipment. It's pretty awesome. I love that concept. Okay, this, this guy uh, who's a vigilante and he carries nothing but golf clubs, baseball bats, and hockey sticks and that. And he puts on like, uh, you know, sports protective gear. <laughs> that is really, really funny. Okay, and, and um, it is gonna be, it's going to be great. Okay, um, now, uh, if you guys didn't already know, Bebop and Rocksteady are supposed to, or rather suggested to appear in this movie. I mean, if you got Turtles plus Casey Jones, you gotta bring up the bad guys. You gotta make them a little bit more meaner, <coughs> or, and, <laughs> excuse me, and stronger. So, d most likely, we're gonna see Bebop and Rocksteady. Originally, Bebop and Rocksteady were planned for the first film, but they thought, ah, oh, it's a little bit too much. You know what? Let's save it for the second one. So, most likely, they're gonna appear for our half shell. Okay? So, that is awesome. Uh, what's really awesome also is the fact that it isn't directed by Jonathan Liebesman, it will be directed from the guy who directed Earth to Echo, which uh, I heard was a decent film. Okay, so there you have it. That's all I got to say about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Now let's talk about the future of the Fast and Furious franchise. And so this is a little bit spoilerish, kind of, not really. But if you want to avoid even a minor spoiler for, Fa for Furious 7, you can stop watching right now. Okay, uh, I I'm going to talk about it just because I've already been exposed to it. Um, but it doesn't really spoil anything about Furious 7. It more like just talks about the future of the franchise. Okay, so Vin Diesel uh, was uh, being interviewed by Jimmy Kimmel. Okay, uh, last uh, you know in the last couple of days, and he mentioned that there's going to be more Fast and Furious films. In, as a matter of fact, Furious Seven starts off, or rather, kicks off a whole new trilogy. All right, which means Seven, Eight, and Nine, Furious Seven, Eight, and Nine are actually going to be a trilogy on its own. Okay, and what what that does is that uh, it 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 um, they're they're no longer like a kind of a standalone films. They they are like a one big story. But what's great about it is that uh, we will see Kurt Russell back in Furious Eight, mainly because uh, apparently his character goes to New York, and and Vin Diesel mentioned that Furious Eight is going to take place in New York because it continues the adventures or rather follows the story for the character. Of Kurt Russell okay so there you have it that's all I got to say Furious 8 and 9 is happening it's gonna be a trilogy Furious 8 gonna take place in New York and Kurt Russell will be a part of that all right so there, it is. So there you have it that's all I got to say in this video Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 G.I. Joe 3 and Furious 8, uh, 8 and 9 it's happening okay let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter at Rage Nation. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Humans, because in humans is at least kind of like more out there. You know, it, I'm not saying that it's not a serious film. I'm just saying that it's out of all the options.